We're taking a look at subatomic particles. There are three well-known subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we already talked a little bit about how they were discovered. We know that J.J. Thompson, for example, discovered electrons in 1897. Rutherford then discovered the nucleus in 1911. And about eight years later, he discovered protons, which we know is a part of the nucleus. And after that, a man named Chadwick discovered the, the neutrons, which are also in the nucleus. Let's take a look at those a little bit more closely. The first thing I want to point out is that we can give these a symbol. And you're probably going to want to use the symbols because it's quick, it's fast, it's easy, you don't have to worry about spelling. A lowercase letter p represents protons. Protons carry a positive charge, so that's why it's got a positive sign in the upper, upper corner. Lowercase letter n for neutrons. Neutrons are electrically neutral. That's why they have a zero in the upper right-hand corner. And electrons get a lowercase letter e, and they're negatively charged, so we give them a negative sign in the upper right-hand corner. So feel free to use the symbols anytime to abbreviate protons, neutrons, and electrons. So like I just got done saying, they do carry a charge. At least two of them carry a charge. Protons, a plus one charge, and the electrons, a negative one charge. And the charge of a proton is exactly equal in magnitude, but opposite in charge of an electron. So if you have a proton and an electron come together, they cancel each other out. They neutralize each other. Now, where are they located in the atom? We know a little bit about that. Protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom, as discovered by Ernest Rutherford. Remember, Rutherford discovered that there's a positive charge in the center of the atom. He referred to the nucleus, but that positive charge was coming from the protons themselves in the nucleus. Neutrons are also there in that tightly, densely packed nucleus. But the electrons are in the outer fringes of the atom in the electron cloud. Most of the space of the atom is actually the electron cloud and uh, that electron cloud, but they occupy that region of space. Now, if you look at the mass of these particles, we want to know for certain what's the biggest subatomic particle and what's the smallest. And, uh, we should be able to rank them from largest to smallest. The neutrons are definitely the largest subatomic particle. And a proton is just slightly smaller than a neutron. So pretty similar, but a little bit smaller in terms of its mass. Electrons are by far the smallest of the three subatomic particles. So be able to rank them from large to small or small to large. That's always a question on the quiz and the test and the homework. Another way of looking at the size comparisons would be to look at their actual masses, and I have it in grams, just to give you an idea how incredibly, incredibly small these subatomic particles are. I mean, atoms are small, and you can't see them individually, but subatomic particles, much, much smaller than the atom, because these are the particles that make up atoms. But if you look at... Um, the mass of the neutron, the big one, 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24th grams, that is a lot of zeros before you get to those four sig figs in that number. A lot of placeholder zeros out in front of that number. And showing just how close protons and neutrons are, the protons, 1.673, so they're pretty close with the first three digits is that last significant digit there in that number that shows you that it's a little bit less in its math, all numbers. And if you look over at electrons, now we're talking really small. 9.1, so it is much, much smaller. 
a lot more zeros in front of that nine and one. If you were to expand that number. Now those numbers aren't very friendly to work with and most often chemists aren't using those. They're gonna look at something quite often called atomic mass units. And atomic mass units are a number that we use when we're talking about nuclear chemistry and we're talking about individual atoms, ions and isotopes, which is what we're getting into with this lesson. And the thing that they decided to do is say that, okay, an atomic mass unit is gonna be assigned a value of one. And since a proton and a neutron are about the same mass, really close, if we're talking about one atomic mass unit, we can use the same number for both of them. They kind of set the scale at one for protons and neutrons. But then if we look at um, electrons, we can see how much smaller an electron is. Five ten thousandths of a atomic mass unit. Much, much smaller in mass than protons and neutrons. In fact, another way of stating that, protons and neutrons are very similar in mass, but if you look at the mass of an electron, it's only about one two thousandth the mass of a proton or a neutron. So if you're talking about the uh, mass of yourself, for example, this would be like a, I don't know, a butterfly landing on your shoulder while you were weighing yourself. The butterfly would be a one two thousandth of the mass of you and the butterfly standing on the scale, just a very negligible amount of mass in comparison. So when we talk about the mass of atoms, we really are talking about the mass of the protons and the neutrons. That's where the substance is. That's where it's going to get its. And because the electrons are such a small amount of the atom, we essentially tend to ignore them. And then a couple other facts about the atom. It scrolls up a little bit. Turns out the number of protons is very important. The number of protons in an atom will define for us what element the atom belongs to. If we look at the periodic table, if we know the number of protons, we can identify what element we're looking at. In fact, that's how the periodic table is organized. When you look at hydrogen, it's got an atomic number of one. It's because it's got one proton. All hydrogen atoms just have one proton. And if you look at helium, it's got an atomic number of two. And that's because it's got two protons in every helium nucleus. So if you had two, uh, atomic number of two, you got two protons and you're, you know you're looking at helium. And then just to give you one more example, if you looked at carbon, carbon's atomic number six, it's got six protons in the nucleus. Every atom that only has six protons in its nucleus must be the element carbon. So we actually use protons to organize the elements from one all the way up to 118 on the periodic table. So we use that a lot, the protons. If we look at the nucleus um, and we look at the neutrons in the nucleus, the nucleus, uh, the neutrons in the nucleus act as an atomic glue that holds the nucleus together. If you think about it a little bit, Let's say uh, I've got some protons in the nucleus. I've got a proton and a proton, another proton. So all these protons have positive charges. And things with positive charges repel each other. They should push away from each other. So the idea that these protons can be really closely, densely packed in close proximity to each other kind of makes it seem like they shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be so close to each other. And if it wasn't for the fact that neutrons that are electrically neutral in the nucleus as well, the neutrons help hold the nucleus together, kind of like an atomic glue that helps give stability to the nucleus. Because if it was all protons, it would probably be very unstable. So the atomic glue of the atom. There's a lot more to what it neutron does, but for our level of understanding, 
the atomic blue analogy is pretty good. And then uh, a few words about the electrons. Due to, due to their location in the electron cloud, electrons are easily gained or lost. And when they are gained or lost, that changes the charge of the atom. And that will lead to the discussion about ions in the next video. So those are the three subatomic particles, some details that we need to keep sorted out for those. And I would encourage you to uh, know those parts and those pieces of information well.